In this video, we're going to quickly see how to debug Python code interactively. So I'm going to write a, a little script here that will return Fibonacci numbers. So I'm going to define the function fib that takes in a variable k, and if k is 0, it simply returns 1. In other words, it returns the sum of k minus 1 and k minus 2. So I've written a nice little recursive function for the Fibonacci sequence. I'm, I'm very happy and I want to use this to find out the uh, third Fibonacci number. So if I were to run this, ah, something seems to have gone wrong. So I'm not entirely sure what it is at this point. So I will run this through a debugger. So pdb, which comes with the standard Python library, so I'm just running this interactively through the Python um, interpreter, and then I call my, my function, and now we get a PDP, PDB prompt. In this, I can do various things. So for example, I can write list to see the code and see and have an arrow point out where I am. These numbers on the left are just the, the line numbering for our code, and it'll be useful because we can use them to insert uh, breakpoints later on. We can use S to step through the code, and so that at each point it tells us where we are. But what's very nice is that we can use it to see the value of, um, of a variable. So S stands for step, so we step through the code. P stands for print, and then K is just whatever variable that's in my code. So I'm printing K, and we see that K is 3. If I was to step a few more times, print k, we got 2, everything seems to be working. I'm just going to start stepping again, and I don't have to keep on pressing s, I can just press enter a couple of times. And let me take a look at what value of k we've got now, k is 1, let me step a couple of times. Not too sure why this is taking so long, let me print k, ah, k is minus 1. So something's happening in my code, and I'm allowing my function to, recurs to, to recursively obtain negative numbers. So something doesn't look quite right. So we've seen p, we've seen list, and we've seen um, s for step. An alternative to s is n, which just goes to the next thing. And this next thing, by that I mean it don't actually step inside of function definitions. So if we press n, we see that we, we get a uh, some sort of error. It comes up there, running cont or step, We'll restart the program, so we're just going to step again. It's restarted, and we're basically at the same point. So at this point, I probably know what's going on, that I've got that k that's not quite right. But let's assume we didn't, and we wanted to find this a bit quicker. Um, it was a bit tedious to have to step through every step of the program. At the same time, next was a bit too much, so we want some alternative. We want to be able to tell the debugger where I wanted to stop. And we do that with break. And so I want it to break at um, line 2. So if I type break 2, there is a break point 1. I can type break with no arguments to see all my breakpoints. So I could have multiple breakpoints. And now to go through our breakpoints, we use C for continue. And this basically goes through your code until it reaches a breakpoint. And so indeed, if I type list now, we see it stopped where we had a breakpoint um, B. Here we can just do the same thing as before. And um, what we can do, if you, if you see when we type break, we see whether or not it's enabled. We can disable a breakpoint. So we'll do disable breakpoint 1. Now if we take a look at break, we see that it's, it's not enabled. It's still there, it's just not enabled. So now when I type um, C for continue, the code just runs. And we do indeed get a, get a, a well, we get the same crash. So if I step back into the code, it, it, it has restarted. If I look at break, the breakpoint is still there, it's just not enabled. So let me enable it again, because it's actually quite a helpful breakpoint. Enable breakpoint 1. And if I continue, we get there. If I take a look at K, because we started again, it's there. So if I continue, take a look at K again, it's going through. I can simply delete the breakpoint. So I'm going to clear this breakpoint. I'm going to clear breakpoint one. If I take a look at break, it's just not there. And if I was to 
continue now, we get the same bug. So let me just step again. If you look at break, there's nothing. What we can do is create a temporary breakpoint, which is quite nice. So T break is simply at line two. Yet again, we take a look at break. We have that breakpoint. And now if I continue, it's hit the breakpoint. So let me just print K. Yep, K is three. And now if we take a look at break, the breakpoint has disappeared. So temporary breakpoint exists only once. And the final thing that's quite nice is we can create a breakpoint at line two, but according to a particular condition. So I only want you to break when k gets negative, because I think that's got something to do with it. So if I take a look at break, we've got break point three, because remember the temporary break point was break point two, and it stops only if k is less than zero. If I continue and I take a look at k, we've gone straight to the point where k is less than zero. You can also exit PDB, and so let me just go into my Fibonacci script and see if I can fix this. So k is 0, 1, then return 1. Otherwise, uh, go recursively. Let me run this through the debugger. If I type break, there are no breakpoints because this is a new instance of the debugger. And if I um, create that break at line 2, if k is less than 0, take a look at my breakpoint. Yep, I only want to stop with k less than 0. If I continue, the program is finished doesn't seem to be a break, and indeed gave me the right answer. So that's how you write, that's how you debug um, interactively. There's loads more that you can do with, with breakpoints and other things. You can also write debug code from the PDB library right in your script. So that's another option that, that might be um, of interest, but I won't, I won't cover it in this video.